Parmanande Haribo Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Tascha Desacharine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We're reading Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 2, contents of the Gita summarized, text number 69. Yeah. Yanisha Sarva Bhutanam Yanisha Sarva Bhutanam Tashyam Jagati Samyami Tashyam Jagati Samyami Yashyam Jagrati Bhutani Yashyam Jagati Bhutani Sanisha Pashyato Mune Sanisha Pashyato Mune Yanisha Sarva Bhutani Yanisha Sarva Bhutani Tashyam Jagrati Samyami Tashyam Jagrati Samyami Yashyam Jagrati Bhutani Yashyam Jagrati Bhutani Sanisha Pashyato Mune Sanisha Pashyato Mune Yanisha Sarva Bhutanam Yanisha Sarva Bhutanam Tashyam Jagrati Bhutanam Tashyam Jagrati Samyami Tashyam Jagrati Samyami Yashyam Jagrati Bhutani Yashyam Jagrati Bhutani Sanisha Pashyato Mune Sanisha Pashyato Mune Yanisha Sarva Bhutanam Yanisha Sarva Bhutanam Yam Jagati Samyami Yashyam Jagati Samyami Yashyam Jagati Bhutani Yashyam Jagati Bhutani Sanisa Pashyato Mune Sanisa Pashyato Mune Yanisa Sarva Bhutanam Yanisa Sarva Bhutanam Yashyam Jagati Samyami Yashyam Jagati Samyami Yashyam Jagati Yeah, I'm 
So this is a very interesting verse from the second end of the second chapter. Lord Krishna is comparing the materialist with a person on the spiritual path. There's a big difference between people who are absorbed in material life and people who are trying to develop spiritually. This is there's a difference between day and night. There's a diff so they're, they're opposites to each other, materialistic people and spiritual. It's a different culture. There's a whole different culture in material life and in spiritual life. We see culture in everything. There's culture, for example, particularly in the dress. You can identify people's culture by how they dress. People in, ma in material life, they're under the control of the modes of nature. They may be either in goodness or in passion or in ignorance. We can see how people dress in the mode of ignorance. How, you know, you get, you can buy clothes nowadays, you can buy jeans which are already torn and got holes in them to look like they're worn. No, they're new, they went, they go to the shop and they buy them like that. <laughs> they like to look, they take pleasure in looking dirty and wearing old worn out clothes. <laughs> That's the mode of ignorance. The mode of passion, the mode of passion, you want to be noticed, you want to be, a, be to, to, take, to attract people's attention. So you want to, the people want to dress in a manner which will no, be noticed and be, get the attention of other people. You want to have something, maybe the latest fashion, some new creation from the fashion shops. And then the mode of goodness, people want to look neat and clean and tidy and presentable. But it's, it's all the mo it's all material, it's different modes of nature. Their interest is the material body. They want to satisfy their material desires and make the body look good for their pleasure of their own mind and senses.
But on the spiritual path, a person on the spiritual path, is, his interest is more concerned in satisfying the senses of the Supreme Lord. So, so dress is a type of culture, just like coming to temple of devotees, we have our particular devotee dress. It's meant to it's meant to show particularly the more the goodness, but the more the pure goodness. Right. Devotee wears a dhoti, we wear dhotis, ladies wear saris. Well, these are things which are easily washed and easily dried. <laughs> When you wear jeans and pants and things like that, it's not so easy to wash and dry them. So there's some culture there. In the, the culture is there in also in food, different kinds of food which people will take also reflects their culture. Yeah, there's food in ignorance, like animal flesh, which is decomposed. And then there's food in passion, which is often very hot and spicy, or with a lot of oil, or very sweet and very rich. And then there's food in goodness, which is just simply vegetarian foodstuffs. Fresh vegetables and fruits and so on, this is all in the mode of goodness. But for the devotee, the devotee's interest is not just only the mode of goodness, the devotee wants prasadam, food which has been offered to Krishna. So we can see the, the difference in the culture. A devotee is not very much attracted to anything which has not been offered to Krishna. You may go to some function maybe a marriage or some party or something and they have so many different dishes, preparations are there. But if it's not prasadam, it is not very attractive to the devotee. But for the non-devotee, for the materialist, for one who's not developed any spiritual culture, they may be thinking, oh, so many nice dishes. We can understand how much we're progressing in Krishna consciousness by how much we still have a taste for the material things.
the Krishna conscious process, taking part in the activities of devotional service, all help for us to develop the spiritual culture. Just like here this evening, devotees have been chanting and dancing for more than an hour, and devotees were very happy, they're very absorbed in the chanting and dancing. Devotees not worried about the time, they're not conscious of the time, how the time is passing, they, they're absorbed in the transcendental chanting of the Holy Name. But someone on the material platform, the, as the chanting goes on, they think, oh, when's it going to stop? They've been chanting for so long. When's it going to end? We think, oh, they're chanting again the same song, the same mantra all the time. There's so much difference in the culture of the devotee and the culture of the materialist. And we often point out to people when they start taking up Krishna consciousness, we point out how much they've changed, how people actually change when they become devotees. Mm. Well, the, the ringing of their handphones is just a pain in the head to them, just a headache disturbs them from their Krishna consciousness. Devotees thinking, he wants to simply absorb in my, his mind and senses fully in the service of Krishna. But the, no, the materialists and non devotees, they're using their mind and senses, but not for Krishna. <laughs> Their consciousness is on the body, and then they're thinking more about how to satisfy the senses. So, of course, before we come to Krishna consciousness, we were in that condition, we were materialists. Some were more in the mode of goodness and others were more in the mode of passion and ignorance. We see that, for example, people who come from countries which are very economically developed, they have much more attachment to sense gratitude. People, when they come from the lesser developed countries, then they're more easy, they're more attracted, they're more able to absorb themselves in spiritual culture. Mm. 
Right? Because all of you have come from Burma, you have a natural attraction for the chanting of the holy names. Not because you're just from Burma, but because of your Nepali culture. Prabhupada told us Nepal is a Vaishnava kingdom. People have great respect for God. But of course, we come to places like Bangkok and we become a little bit contaminated by the culture here. Right. You take it, you come to Bangkok, you get a job in Bangkok, and you get exposed to all the things which people in Bangkok do. Most people are not vegetarian. It's very uncommon for someone to be a vegetarian. And then, of course, dress people, the way that people dress and how they be, how they make up. Then the language, how people speak to each other. Oh, of course, we see in general Thai people. They have a very, they have a, some very polite culture here in Thailand. That everyone, when they meet each other, they will often offer pronouns to each other. Will fold their palms together in respect. So this this is a very nice culture. But of course there's other things which people do which are not very cultured. You know, the, the things they smoke and the things they eat and drink can be very influenced by the modes of ignorance. So we want to come to the spiritual platform, we have to understand how important it is for us to practice these principles of Krishna consciousness. And how much we have become Krishna conscious will be reflected by how much we have absorbed the culture of Krishna consciousness. It's not only just being a vegetarian. That's one thing, but that's not the only, that's not enough. We need to do more than just simply be vegetarian. So, Krishna consciousness is teaching us how to develop, first of all, consciousness of our own self to understand who we are. Prabhupada said, first become conscious of ourself and then understand more who is Krishna, become conscious of Krishna. Uh, 
please come. We'll be sharing the class tonight. So, being conscious of ourself, understanding who I am, first we have to know that we're not the body, that we're all spiritual beings. So, being conscious of ourself, understanding more about our frailty, understanding our faults, how we get angry sometimes and how we can be lazy and how we can be envious, these kind of things, becoming more aware of our problems, our bad qualities. And some, of course we should become aware of how we're still attached to so many material things. No, we're, we, we still have a, an attachment to movies, cinemas. We are attached to subtle forms of sense gratification. We have many different things like that, which we gradually we should become aware of these different things, which are, which are affecting our own consciousness. We have to know, we have to understand about our problems, our defects which are there within us, and then we want to work on them to try to control them, to, to get over them, to remove them. And then that will bring us away from passion and ignorance and bring us up to the mode of goodness. And from that then we can go on to become Krishna conscious. We want to become Krishna conscious, we have to be ready to become Krishna conscious. We have to come up to the mode of goodness and get rid of that passion and ignorance. And the, the process is simply by engaging in bhakti yoga, by coming here and hearing and chanting, doing service. In this way, what is it? Night will become the day. The darkness. Night is like darkness and the day is like knowledge. Srila Prabhupada published his Back to Godhead magazine. And he put on the front cover of the magazine, he used to print a slogan for the magazine. The slogan said, Godhead is light, nations is darkness. Where there is Godhead, well, where there is where, where there's Godhead, there is light, where there is nations, there is only this darkness, ignorance. Pratishma Lekhosaki, Bhagavan Prakashamansa, Ramaya, 
So where there is Godhead, there can be no ignorance. Just as where there is light, there can be no darkness. So we want to cultivate this kind of consciousness of Godhead, Krishna consciousness. When we come to Krishna consciousness, then the darkness of ignorance is all removed. But it said, one who is the devotee will have all the good qualities. We are having, we are trying to develop the qualities. And the, the way we develop these qualities is by practicing Krishna consciousness. And, and as we said, this Krishna consciousness begins with first of all understanding who we are, becoming conscious of our own self. Seeing our own faults and reflecting on them and then appreciating also our insignificance in this world. One who is a devotee, he will think like that. But the non-devotee, they think the opposite. The non-devotee thinks I'm perfect and they only see faults in others. He's only reflecting on the faults of other people he's, and he's thinking how wonderful and how great he is. And then on the body, if, the, if, if he hears about Krishna, he thinks, well, Krishna is just an ordinary person. Krishna is just someone who takes birth and dies. And when he hears about the soul, he thinks, well, at the time of death, everything is finished. So the soul is also finished. And so they have a very different philosophy. The materialist philosophy is totally opposite to the philosophy of the devotee. So we're trying to change all these people, all these non-devotees. We want to preach to them and enlighten them and make them into devotees. This is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. That even the fallen souls like Jagai and Madhai, they could be made into devotees. So the Krishna consciousness movement is continuing the work of Lord Chaitanya by reclaiming all the fallen souls and bringing them to Krishna consciousness. But it takes some time, it doesn't happen so quickly. Prabhupada used to say, he said it will take, I think I remember, three generations, at least three generations before we get pure devotees. 
I was just reading, someone wrote a book, they said ten generations. I don't I didn't remember that, but but the point is there that it takes time for us to come to that level of Krishna consciousness. But the more time you give to the process, the quicker it will take, the better effect will, will come about. If we only come on Sunday night, if we only come Sunday night and take part in the program, then you don't progress very quickly. The whole week for Maya and Sunday night we come and chant and dance Hare Krishna. We eat some prasadam and we go home and then Monday morning next back to work, back into Maya. So we want to be more aware of how this material energy is entrapping us, how we're become, becoming entangled in the material ways, in the material culture, and we want to try to get free of this. I remember Srila Prabhupada saying, the Prabhupada would say, he'd point to all the Indian people who said, you're all moving away, you're very near to Krishna, but you're all moving away. But these Westerners, they're far away, but they're moving towards Krishna. So Prabhupada saw what was happening and he was concerned about it. This is why this Krishna consciousness movement is here. He, he wants to help all of us to get out of this maya and to come to Krishna, to have a better life. You can see, the life of the devotee is certainly better than the life of the material. The material world has nothing to offer. There is no shelter in that material energy. It's simply cruel in making our life miserable. But if we stay in Krishna consciousness and feel thankful to be a part of Krishna's movement, then our life will, can become successful. So we're very grateful to Prabhupada that he given us his chance, he saved us in so many ways from the material life. And we want to take full advantage of this opportunity. We don't know how long we will have this opportunity. So many demonic, atheistic governments make it very difficult for us to practice Krishna consciousness. 
They make it so easy for people to promote their illicit, their, 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 to do their propaganda for intoxication and gambling and all of these things. But to propagate Krishna consciousness, it's so difficult. Drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, even though they know everything is so dangerous, so bad for them, but the governments allow it. No, it's okay. But Krishna consciousness, God consciousness, this is terrible. We have to stop this. We have to get rid of this. And so we face so much, always so much opposition in different parts of the world in trying to spread Krishna consciousness. So we should be grateful that we have this opportunity now. Take advantage. The saying in Sanskrit, Subhasya Sigram, auspicious thing should be done immediately. So immediately we should all surrender, take full shelter of Krishna consciousness and fully engage in devotion of self. So we'll ask uh, His Grace Gokulishwara Prabhu to please come, continue. You're okay, you got time. We can go on. Yeah. I sit down. Are you sure that it's okay? Oh, okay. Oh, okay.